The tasks sheet is actually one of my favorite sheets. And the reason being is because in the previous version of the crop planner, you kind of had to find your tasks in this big sheet. And what this version done is it really separates them. So you remember in the order sheet that it does generate tasks for soaking, sowing, and uncovering with the dates and the number of trays for all your crops. But that's still, there, there are all these dates um, and it's hard to make order of that. And so what this sheet does is it makes order of your tasks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a, a first day. And any of the dates on the spreadsheet, by the way, you just double click on them and you put in your uh, date. So I'm going to go through here to October. You know we had that one on, let's go to this November 3rd week because we were looking at that. So when I put in November 3rd, it tells me all the things I need to do that day. Actually, I'm going to step back. Let's put in Monday. Because if you're going to do a week, like start your week on a Sunday or a Monday as standard practice. Now it might actually make more sense for your first day to be a Tuesday or a Wednesday even, just based on your crop cycle. The reason I do a Monday is because that's when we do a lot of our soaking and sowing anyways. And so it makes sense for that to be the time where I'm reviewing uh, our orders, doing all that, and then uh, and then uh, updating and then doing the, the actual tasks here. So when I put this date in here, you can see the date auto fills for all the rest of the week. So I'm doing this on a week to week basis. The harvest day is highlighted here because we don't generate harvest tasks. There's no need. Harvest day is harvest day and it's very obvious. It's all the little tasks leading up to harvest day that can be a little more complicated. So I'm just going to open these all up. And so you can see right here is Monday, I'm going to soak, you know, one uh, live sunflower tray and then six regular sunflower trays. I'm going to sow uh, the one and the six. And you can see I'm also sowing nine speckled pea. So why am I sowing nine peckles, speckled pea on Monday but not soaking it? Because I soaked it the night before, right? And you'll see on our next Sunday that it shows up there again. So um, the other thing this tells you, and then it tells me what I'm uncovering from a previous harvest. So what this also tells me is these trays that I'm soaking, it tells me what harvest I'm soaking for. So when I'm looking at that and I'm soaking trays on a Monday, this is telling me, by the way, these are for next Tuesday, November 10th. And that perspective sometimes helps, especially if you have three uh, harvests a week and you're soaking and sowing different stuff on different days, you kind of forget what you're actually soaking or sowing for. So this lays that out. So you can see here, we can go through our week and take a look at all the things we need to do. The day after is when we're doing our soak and sow of arugula and radish. And then I'm, I'm uncovering a radish or an arugula from a previous soaking. So this is all laid out. Now, why this is useful is because you can start to see, well, what days are gonna be really busy? Day two, it's a harvest day. I've got soaking and sowing to do and some uncovering. Yeah, my harvest day is going to be a pretty big day. So knowing that I've also got the soaking and sewing to do might prompt me to bring in extra staff. So as I start thinking about my labor projections, I need to project based on the number of tasks we have to do in a day. Harvest day is always going to require more staff and then adding more soaking and sewing based on crop cycles is going to add even more potentially or make it a longer day or make it a busier day or all of the above. Now, here's an example of Wednesday. The only crop activity you need to do is soak speckled pea. So Wednesday might be like, oh, like Wednesday is kind of a lag day, even though in the summer, Wednesday is when, when we hear we have a, a farmer's market scheduled. So we will account for those hours later. So this is just a really good way to get a look at your week. And every week is gonna be different, though similar. And what you're getting here is like, what am I soaking? How many trays of it am I soaking? When are those for? These things, we don't get dates for uncovering and sowing, it becomes too complex. So our, our soaking for harvest on date is based on our, on our soaking there. Soaking really is the beginning of the process, so that's the one we're trying to recognize. And so again, this just breaks it down for every day. I can collapse those and we get a look at what that week looks like there. So that's our tasks. And I'm really confident for people that have used the old crop planner, that this is going to be a game changer. It's going to help uh, help sort of focus on your week. And when, I, when I'm when i here on a Monday and I'm looking at these things, 
you know, this might not seem a little, you know, might seem a little bit off. Got this going on down here. Um, I might go back to my orders and like, it's Monday. Like, let's just double check everything before we sew it, right? So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to whatever date that was, uh, November 3rd. Is that it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but then I might go, it's like, oh, I forgot this order. I thought that number seemed a little bit low. So you can use the, these, the task sheet to go back and double check your orders as well, because intuitively you're going to get a sense of whether things are right or not. And you can see we're uncovering lots of stuff here on the Monday, because uh, these are going to be Friday's harvest. And if you remember, Friday was a big harvest for the farmer's market. So there's lots of trays there to be um, accounted for. So that's our tasks. So these sheets here, customers, crops, orders, harvests, and tasks, are really the five main things you're gonna be using all the time in order to run your business. Everything else here is kind of summaries and icing on the cake, but it's really nice icing with a nice chocolatey tinge that's not too sweet. Um, so the, you know, I'm sure you'll appreciate those as well. So now that we've looked at those main components there, let's take a quick look at deliveries in our next tutorial.